when I was in prison and I became a, a higher ranking uh, official within the numbers gang, my, my monthly income was between 500,000 rand. Red Boy Welcome is an ex-member of the numbers gang which is one of the biggest gangs in South Africa in prison. And in some prisons, the Numbers Gang is the only gang that exists. Before he was an ex-gang member, he was one of the gang leaders of the Numbers Gang. In this video, I'm going to be looking into his origin, how he got into prison in the first place, and how he was able to make millions while he was in prison and leave the Numbers Gang without losing his life. Although Mr. Olcom presents a warm-hearted, nice guy, friendly, spirited persona, one look into his prison life and your perception of him changes. The things that Mr. Olcom did to get to the top in prison were not negotiable. They were mandatory. The way one gets to the top in prison life is not the same way one gets to the top in everyday life. Do you know who I am? And I was like, I don't know who you are and I don't care. To fully understand how Vidboy got arrested in the first place, we have to take a look at his origins. Vid Boy Welcome was born into a three-parent household in Valana Park in the Cape Flats in Western Cape. But his father was not home most of the time due to what he had to do to provide for his family. With his father not home most of the time, Vid Boy was raised by his grandmother most of the time and his mother when she was there. As a colored kid who grew up in a predominantly colored neighborhood which was drug and gang infested, it is safe to say that Vid Boy was never dealt a good hand to begin with. The type of community Welcome was raised in was a community that rewarded bad choices and scorned good ones. Although his parents tried to keep him away from the streets of Valhalla by taking him to a school away from the hood, it didn't work because every time he would come back from school alone in his blazer he would get teased and laughed at by his peers and people who were revered in the hood. As Vidboy went on with his day to day he wanted to be just like the people who were making fun of him because they were feared and respected by his community and he thought it would make life easier for him in the hood. As he grew up, he started being a bit disobedient by sneaking out the house so he can be in the streets more and started befriending these people that once teased him. And since his father was not around, he was in a way fathered by the people he considered his friends at that time. He, I had a very difficult um, relationship with my father. My father was the kind of man that believed in providing mm. and his providing meant not being present. In his early teen years, Volcom was living a double life. At school, he was a high achiever, always in the top 10, president of the debate and chess club. Then when he was in Valhalla, he was gang affiliated, he was a robber and a delivery boy. Volcom lived this way because he wanted to be accepted and understood everywhere he was. At home, he wanted to be accepted by his parents, in the streets by the gangsters, and at school by his classmates and teachers. One of the things that Vidboy had to do to get accepted by his hood friends was get a knife and a knife he got. His first knife was a stable knife, a small knife that can be used to peel an orange or an apple. But in his case, it would be used to threaten victims of his crimes. The first person he threatened with the knife was an old lady who did not even suspect him of being a Zotzi. She tried to stop him, but Vidboy was determined to be accepted by his hood friends, so her pleading didn't help. So after he robbed the old lady, he ran away with his friends and got the validation he wanted. When he was 14, he got a promotion as he called it. One of the high archies told him he saw potential in him, something special, and those words gave him a sense of achievement, made him feel accepted. From that day forward, he started delivering packages, mentioned dice as it was called by this guy. He would deliver the merchandise by using his cool bag to conceal the packages and while he was wearing his cool uniform to not be suspected. Most of the packages he would deliver were light. He assumed they were drugs but he never looked because he was told not to. One day he was handed a heavy bag and he was given specific instruction to take the bag home and place it under his bed. When he reached home and his grandmother asked him whose bag is that, he lied and said it was a friend's school bag and that the friend was going to come and pick it up later. He got to his room and placed the bag under his bed as he was told and a few hours later curiosity got the best of him and opened the bag. What he found in the bag was guns, the type of guns he had only seen on TV until that point. And after his mind comprehended what he was trusted with, he felt that sense of accomplishment again. He took some out and started posing with them in the mirror like they would in the movies. He felt powerful, unstoppable and he wanted to feel like that for real. So I opened the bag and I looked inside and I saw all of these guns and I took one of them out and I was like still standing in front of the mirror and I was like modeling because I've seen guns in movies, you know, and, and, and the minute I touched that gun, I felt so strong, I felt so powerful and I was playing with it. A few years later, he had a couple of non-confirmed bodies under his belt, had a credible street cred 
and at age 17 the police had arrested him along with five or more other guys for being at the wrong place at the wrong time while they were at the back of the police van the other men were able to convince him to take the blame for everything since he was the youngest the police body story and the other men were set free and since he had his gun on him the police were able to match the bullets they had found in the past to his gun a few days later he was sentenced 23 years in prison at the age of 17. the first day he walked into paul's Mall prison he was asked what his name was and when he answered welcome he got slapped extremely hard when he was asked again who he was he said fit boy and still got slapped at that moment he realized that his life outside prison meant nothing inside prison and he had to start from the bottom again fast forward he joined the numbers gang and he was told the quickest way to climb the ranks he had to stab a correction officer he agreed and when the day came he didn't know who was the correction officer he was going to stab only to find out that the officer he had to stab was the one that was being nice to him the officer he had to stab used to check up on him like a friend and when it came to stabbing him welcome didn't hesitate and stabbed him in the neck and the officer died his prison sentence was never extended because no weapon was found i was 20 21 when when i when i uh, stabbed the first correctional officer the funny thing is this correctional officer was a very good friend because he used to he used to come to me during exercise and he used to ask me do you have enough sugar do you have enough milk can i bring you more bread after that incident he quickly climbed the numbers by stabbing a couple more correction officers and in no time he was in a place of power in prison where he was able to call the shots at that place of power is where he would make 500,000 per month in prison by selling drugs providing solicitation of information to name a few since there is no money allowed in prison the money that was obtained in prison had to live through corrupted officers to the counselors outside and depending on how much you made in prison you would get rewarded when you get out if you're saving life your family is taken care of by the counselors outside when he was left with a couple of years of his sentence that's when he decided he wanted out the numbers and the only reason he got out and kept his life is because he taught one of the higher archies in prison how to read and write and that brings us to today welcome is living a free life a life most people don't get to have after their prison life cause once a number always a number to find out more about mr welcome check the links in the description because a lot of information was left out of this video